In this video, we continue our description of hybridization of atomic orbitals by explaining sp3d and sp3d2 hybridization. All right, let's consider the compounds uh, phosphorus pentachloride and sulfur hexafluoride. Right. Uh, notice that in uh, each one of these two molecules, the central atom, phosphorus or sulfur, uh, is connected to either five or six uh, atoms. And uh, uh, the hybridizations uh, sp, sp2, and sp3 are actually not able to accommodate for uh, any of such connectivity because you only have a total of four orbitals available in each one of them. Okay, so we actually have to come up with new hybridization schemes to accommodate for the fact that uh, in phosphorus pentachloride, you have uh, a trigonal bipyramid, uh, bipyramid uh, structure in which all of the bonds are identical. And in sulfur hexafluoride, you have an octahedral uh, shape around that sulfur atom, and all of the bonds, bonds are also identical. All right, so uh, the way to think about this is as before, consider an energy diagram for the atom uh, whose orbitals are undergoing hybridization. Phosphorus uh, in the valence, uh, is a 3s2 and then a 3p3 uh, electronic configuration. Okay. Well, uh, our goal here is to actually form uh, five orbitals uh, that are identical and they are distributed uh, along the directions of a trigonal uh, bipyramid. From this natural orbital picture, we essentially can't form five orbitals, right? We only have four. Uh, what is more, if there's actually, if the natural picture is in play, then you would only be able to form uh, three bonds, uh, and they would be 90 degrees from each other, which again is not the case for uh, phosphorus pentachloride. The idea here is that uh, because phosphorus is in the, in the third row, okay, now you have empty 3D orbitals that are close enough in energy to these 3s and 3p that they might be able to mix to generate hybrid orbitals. Okay, so then our hybridization scheme would be as follows. You take uh, that electron from the 3s uh, orbital and then promote it to uh, one of those 3d orbitals. And then that would be the promotion scheme. And uh, what you do after this is you hybridize these five natural atomic orbitals to provide five hybrid atomic orbitals. Right? So the uh, orbital scheme would be uh, something like this. Okay, you will have five hybrid atomic orbitals, which are called sp3d. Uh, some books call them d sp3. It really doesn't matter. Okay, and now each one of them will have one electron, and therefore you can form uh, five sigma bonds with uh, terminal atoms like uh, uh, chlorine in this case. Right? Uh, if you choose uh, the right linear combinations of these orbitals, it actually turns out that you can come up with a trigonal bipyramid shape for them. Right, that is going to be a little bit hard to uh, draw right here, but we're going to try to do our best. Right, so this will be uh, phosphorus, and then you will have your uh, one of the actual um, uh, hybrid orbitals, the sp3. I'm not going to label all of them, but then you will have another one in the opposite direction. That will be another hybrid orbital, and then you will have three in the equatorial direction. Right, so one of them coming this way, and then another one going uh, uh, inside the plane at 120 degrees from uh, this orbital, which again, this is very difficult to draw, but I'm going to try to do my best. And then another orbital uh, going 20, 120 degrees from this one, 120 degrees from this one, and again, these three orbitals in the equatorial uh, uh, location are perpendicular to the two axial orbitals. Okay, so therefore, uh, if we actually now have one electron in each one of these orbitals, then we can understand uh, nicely how the bonding with uh, chlorine is to form that uh, phosphorus pentachloride, right? Each of each one of these orbitals would actually bind with a 3p orbital uh, that is singly occupied of chlorine. Uh, I'm going to simplify simply by uh, looking at this, right? So that would be a 3p in this case. It might be a 3pz uh, of chlorine, which is singly occupied to generate a sigma bond. And I'm omitting here the uh, rest of atomic orbitals of chlorine. Okay, yes, for uh, simplicity. The same thing we'll have in here, there, there, and there. Okay, so that is your uh, DSP3 hybridization, or SP3D, which again has the novelty of incorporating empty 3D orbitals which are close enough in energy uh, uh, to the 3s and the 3ps uh, of the balance. Now, extension of these to SF6 is going to be straightforward. 
Okay, uh, notice that we can uh, use this same energy diagram right here, but uh, try to reformulate it for sulfur. All right, so uh, sulfur, the lowest energy electronic configuration would be a 3s2, uh, then 3p4. Uh, that is what you have. But again, in compounds like uh, sulfur hexafluoride, you form six identical bonds which are uh, aligned uh, towards the uh, vertices of an octahedron. Okay, so a way to actually do that is to promote the electron uh, here from the S to the D, and then this little electron there. And now you have uh, six singly occupied atomic orbitals, but again, notice that they are different, right? So this is the promotion step. The next step would be the hybridization. Right, you form linear combinations of these uh, six atomic orbitals to generate six hybrid orbitals. And uh, that is uh, what we call sp3d2 hybridization. And some books call this d2 sp3 hybridization. Okay, now each one of these six orbitals would have now one electron. They will be all identical. And again, the orientation of these orbitals would be uh, towards the vertices of an octahedron. Okay, so that explains nicely how uh, you can have uh, an octahedral sulfur hexafluoride structure. And again, the gist of it is that uh, the bonds between sulfur and fluorine would be sigma bonds between uh, uh, the two, the singly occupied 2p orbital of fluorine, which I'm going to draw like this. That would be uh, the 2pc, right, singly occupied. And again, this hybrid sp3d2 orbital of sulfur. Okay, so all of six bonds are uh, sigma bonds, and then uh, the shape of the molecule uh, will be octahedral. All right, so with this video, we have uh, reviewed uh, the concept and the promotion of hybridization steps in D sp3 uh, orbitals, and then D2 sp3 or, uh, uh, orbitals as well. Now, notice that this type of hybridization can only happen if you're in the second row. Uh, uh, sorry, the third row or below, right? Second row atoms like uh, nitrogen or oxygen cannot form this because if you now go back to this uh, uh, 2s or 2p orbitals, the 3d energy levels are not going to be close enough in energy to these uh, balanced orbitals, right? They will be much, much higher in energy, perhaps up here. And that means that the hybridization is actually uh, not possible. This will be the lacuna configuration for nitrogen, which is right above phosphorus in the periodic table, right? Uh, the idea is that this type of hybridizations, right, where you involve the uh, orbitals, uh, they need to be done with atoms that are at least in the third row or below.